All right, Crystal, what's on your radar? Well, a new survey of college students by our friends at Chegg College Pulse has some revealing numbers, which should be a wake-up call for Democrats who are looking to oust Donald Trump in November. Now, Biden leads among this demographic and leads handily with 57% of the vote. However, the next highest vote getter isn't even actually Donald Trump. It's none of the above. 22% of college students said they would either not vote at all or support a different candidate in the 2020 election. That means more than one in five of these young college voters finds the choices selected by the two major parties so unacceptable that they will opt out of voting for either one of them entirely. Now, obviously, that has potentially massive implications for this election, which is expected to be close. As the Democratic establishment loves to remind us, in 2016, third-party voting surged as voters faced two deeply unpopular choices. Jill Stein and Gary Johnson both doubled their popular vote totals from 2012 when they were also on the ballot. And in fact, the third-party vote combined for Evan McMullen, Gary Johnson, and Jill Stein accounted for more than Trump's win margin in Michigan, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Arizona, and Florida. Florida. Of course, we all know that assuming that all of these votes would have gone to Hillary Clinton if they were forced to make a choice is foolish, and also that no candidate is owed or entitled to any of your votes. Instead, that a significant and potentially determinative number of voters would back candidates highly unlikely to win is in fact an indictment of the two mainstream candidates and their complete inability to overcome those voters' deep concerns. So while the Chegg numbers show we may be facing a similar dynamic in 2020, while yes, Biden beats Trump by a sizable number in this poll, that's a demographic group that should be enthusiastically riding with Biden. No reservations. Ever since Barack Obama won in 2008, young people in general and college students in particular have been a key part of the Democratic coalition. One of the lazy assumptions behind the notion of a coalition of the ascendant that would put Democrats into a dominant power position for years to come was that young people would back them in increasing numbers year after year. After all, each successive generation is, in fact, more progressive than the last in recent years on issues ranging from economics to drugs to immigration. Gen Z is also the most diverse generation in history. In fact, though, since the high watermark of 2008, the Democratic margin has been ebbing presidential election after presidential election among young voters. No surprise that college students are less likely to be enthusiastic about Biden, given that the last primary election poll, even after Bernie looked very, very unlikely to prevail, still found college students back in the Vermont senator by a margin of 72% to 23%. But I think that 22% number of college students who are opting out of either of the two major parties is also a deeply troubling development for the Democratic Party and frankly for the nation in general, because a large chunk of disaffected young voters can lead to a deep cynicism and a nihilism that could cause a collapse of the legitimacy of electoral politics altogether. Older millennials, like myself, cut our political teeth on a rock war lies, financial crash malfeasance, and mindless cable news cage matches. This generation is now watching as their futures, already narrowed in possibility by inequality and monopolistic overreach in all markets, see even those dim hopes dashed by the epic mismanagement of a crisis that will only exacerbate our current disastrous direction. No, I don't blame young voters for saying, screw you, to all of this at all. They have every reason to feel cynical and more reasons, frankly, every day. Just look at D.C. right now. Democrats are wholly complicit in crafting a pathetically inadequate response that throws scraps to small businesses and individual workers while showering largesse upon those who need the least help. It is truly grotesque. And it is exactly the dynamic that is enabled by lesser of two evils thinking. We're supposed to go, oh, but at least the Dems got some oversight added to that grotesque bailout bill and kept Trump from profiting. Of course, those oversight provisions were so pathetic and toothless as to have been discarded by Trump immediately upon signing the bill anyway. If they did have teeth, it says everything that our highest aspiration should be public transparency after the fact of all the many ways we've been screwed. And of course, young voters watched as Democrats worked more aggressively to defeat Bernie Sanders, the one candidate that many of them had any real hope in, than they ever worked to defeat any Republican. I think it was Stoller who tweeted that one. That decision got them their guy, an empty shell by the name of Joe Biden, who will continue the DNC cartel gravy train, will continue the revolving doors and the donor stroking on which this town is truly built. But mark my words, that came at a major price. Because while yes, 
the global right-wing reactionary movement, of which Trump is certainly a part, is odious to most young people. But increasingly, young voters are rejecting that lesser of two evils argument. They're not going to play by your rules. They're not going to give in to your shaming. Why? Because they see that picking from the lesser of two evils is the road to exactly where we are today. And for a generation that has watched as prosperity has been hoarded by their elders, an opportunity hoarded by the affluent, where we are today is a wholly unacceptable outcome, especially as the relentless science of climate change creates an imperative to act dramatically right now. Democrats have taken young voters for granted and they've actively spit in their face. As a result, they may well wake up on the morning after election day and find their vaunted coalition of the ascendant once again trumped. Sagar, I wonder what you make of mm. One out of five college students saying no to all of these people. I mean, that is a pretty stunning development. Yeah, it is a stunning development, especially because they have the third party and then the straight up just not going to vote. Just not I actually do it. suspect that higher is going to be that number is higher than they let on there. Because even the ones who say they support Biden, are they, are they really, really going to show up? Are you going to take your absentee ballot and request it from home? I don't think so. I was in college. I remember. A lot of people didn't vote. <laughs> well, and, especially given who knows right. what's going to be happening in November, you know? Well, yeah, exactly. It's, I mean, yeah, are they going to be home? What's the deal? I mean, and it's also important to remember, look, half the half young people in this country are also not in college. And they are even more screwed than the people who are in college. Uh, absolutely. Because they're at the beginning part. Of, who is the easiest person to cut in a job, right? It's a young person. Uh, they might be ancillary to the workforce, less skilled than someone else. They're, these are the people who are just now entering the market or have only been in the market five to 10 years, they're the, they're the most expendable. And the data shows that, which is that in many of these service industries and other places, a lot of places where young people build skills or their, their entry into the workplace, especially for the non-college educated, they're the ones hardest hit Absolutely. that has come to this job market. Absolutely. So they get nothing. They get no money. They're barely on unemployment. They have no idea how they're going to pay their bills. These college students are racking up massive amounts of debt relative. I mean, look, I mean, what educate they're getting Zoom educations right now. The whole point for of college, thousands upon thousands of dollars. I mean, how much are you paying for that Zoom session? Yeah. Right. I mean, the whole point of college. Look, let's be real. What is the what is the actual benefit of college? It's not the education. It's about the social connections and then the class difference. And then the yeah, it's about the mark next year. The name. stamp of approval. Yeah. So that you can apply for like a job that you probably didn't even need college for in the first place. That's really <laughs> totally what it all true. comes down to. Yeah. And I think that this whole system is being revealed. And it, of course. Right. Like these people do not. What the, what the good part of this is, is that nobody can take them for granted. And I, well, that's what I actually is the more heartening story there, which is that both parties actually have an opportunity because these young people who supported Bernie Sanders, especially the college educated ones who supported Bernie Sanders, those people were there for the issues. They were never there just for the D next to somebody's name, the vote blue, that's right. no matter who mentality. They're very much up for grabs whenever it comes to if you support their issues, they're willing to come with you. You just have to go and meet them where they are, speak to the concerns that they have in their life. And I, what I worry about more than anything is a deep Nihilism, because yep. I saw what the recession did to many of my own friends, people my own age, um, and the 2008 recession, the subsequent explosion of debt, and the lack of ability to find a job that actually pays out and is worth the debt that you'd have incurred, the stress that has in, has put upon people who I know is just immense. Yeah. And, and that's about to happen to an entire generation. It could be worse. I mean, what are all these people who are gonna be graduating going to be doing come come in the fall. I mean, I just don't like what is awaiting you out right. in the marketplace. It's just like a barren wasteland. And it's like every month that you delay at that time, both for the college educated and the non-college educated is a month in which you're not accumulating wealth and which you're not paying down debt. That's what I worry about more than anything, because the political ramifications of that are immense. Right. We are talking about a radical type of politics that is not American. I mean, we have not seen that here. In If, if we have seen it here, it's been over 100 years since the last time we did. Right. And what political scientists find is that if you vote for the same party in basically two election cycles, and you're very likely to be sort of a partisan loyalist to that party for most of your life. And what we're seeing with young voters in particular is they they just aren't developing 
that partisan loyalty to either of these parties. Now, maybe that's not a bad thing, right? I think it's a good thing. I think it is a good thing that they're independent mind, think for themselves. They're not just going to vote blue no matter who, just go along like good little boys and girls and do what they're told by their party elders. They're going to assess things as they come. But that means for, for Democrats who have really just assumed that they could take this voting clock for granted, who have been happy to. I mean, look, let's be real about what happened at the end of this primary. Bernie Sanders lost, but that was because of a concerted effort by every force within the Democratic Party and the media to say, no, it's not your turn. We don't care that 70 percent of young people, 70 percent of college students are like, yes, this is our guy. We don't care. We're not going to consider you for VP, not just Bernie Sanders, but anyone in his movement for VP. We're not going to consider even one of you for the administration. All we care is about vanquishing your movement and crushing your dreams. Like, how are you supposed to analyze that? You look at this and you go, both of these parties basically have contempt for me and hate my guts. So what do you expect me to do? You think I'm just going to fall in line? But they do. That's exactly what they expect. They think young people will just fall in line. They think they'll just show up because Trump is so bad and that that's going to be enough. And I think what you see with 22% saying, "Mm -mm, not going to do it, is a significant minority view that could be ultimately, frankly, determinative in this election. Oh, absolutely. And And like I said, I think that number is higher than is reflected there on the screen. Next on Rising, touched upon it earlier, but it seems as if President Trump could be doing a lot better with seniors. Looking at the other end of the age bracket, Joe Biden seems to be edging him out there. Principal Deputy Communications Director for the Trump campaign is going to talk about their strategy when Rising continues.